Google I.O. was a few weeks ago and Google had some pretty big announcements to go over with us. So I've got five takeaways from Google I.O. So let's get into it. But before we get into the video, 98% of my viewers are not subscribed. So what are you guys doing? Be sure to like, share and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. It would help me out a lot. Share it with all your friends. Press that notification bell also down below so that this way you are the first ones to know when I upload. And now onto the video. Number five is AI. AI has been a big part of what Google has been trying to focus on, especially this year with ChatGPT becoming a thing. Their focus is being an AI first company. You might have seen AI in action with auto replies and your text messages and your emails that you send. Well, now you can send full on emails using AI. They use the canceled airlines as an email for an example, but basically you can have AI write your entire email for you. They are putting AI into maps as well, allowing you to see your whole entire trip in advance. You can use immersive view to preview your trip. This also allows you to preview the weather and traffic. That is going to be awesome, especially for commuters and travelers alike. Then they talked about how AI is already used in Google Photos with Magic Eraser that was first introduced in the Pixel 7. Now it's in Google Photos. Then they introduced Magic Editor. This allows you to move whole objects within photos. So why do I have a feeling that IG influencers are going to use this? One example of this that they used was a lady near a waterfall. And what they did was they managed to move that lady over closer to the waterfall so that this way the water looks like it's falling right into her hands. It's actually pretty cool. Number four is Palm 2. Palm 2 was announced. For those who don't know, Palm 2 is the next generation of large language learning models that build upon Google's research on AI. This allows people to translate code, languages, and math and reasoning. They trained Palm based on language and translation. They use scientific and mathematical data. It is currently being used in Google Bard, which is Google's ChatGPT. This is going to be something developers will want to use because it allows people to collab and potentially fix code and work together to build awesome apps and websites. BARD is open to over 180 countries and is coming to more countries soon. Soon, you'll be able to talk to BARD in Japanese and Korean. So this is going to be something awesome. I'm already using Google BARD and I think it's going to be awesome, but at the same time, it's something that's kind of scary, but I think that this will be something that future AI and future speakers and whatever, it's going to get smarter as time goes on. Number three is Google Labs. Now Google is a search company, so they announced that generative AI will be used within search. This is Google Labs. This allows you to search deeper into places. So for example, you can look up parks that are kid friendly, but you can take that one step further and have generative AI allow you to look up which parks are more kid friendly than the other. You can also use this to see which bike is best for a five mile commute, which places have the best pasta or whatever your desire is. It is a very deep way to research something. It can also help you point out key things like why whales sing. This is Google Labs at work. Google Labs can be found by clicking on the flask within the Google app or on Google.com. Number two is responsible AI. Google will do everything in their power to make sure that AI is responsible. Misinformation, discrimination, and other things could potentially happen with AI. So they put in some guardrails so that deep fakes can't be used to translate a video. So to combat this, some AI tools will only be available to authorized partners. Google is going to make sure that AI will be used responsibly so that this doesn't happen. And number one, finally, Android and hardware. Google had some new hardware announced at Google I.O. Find My Device will now expand to helping you find your headphones. So if let's say you left your earbuds at the gym, 
you will be able to find them via the Find My Device app. Also, you can have Find My Device find your tracker tags. They also worked with Apple to allow you to know when an unknown Apple tag is nearby. Now, this is great because this will help combat Apple tag stalking. And speaking of Apple, there was a big cheer that broke out when Google pleaded with Apple to support RCS. And you know what? I absolutely 100% agree with Google on this one. Apple, you have got to support RCS if you want cohesiveness within this world. They also announced new additions to wallpapers. This will allow you to make wallpapers out of emojis, 3D photos, and generative wallpapers will allow you to make art out of your favorite wallpapers. So this looks like a really cool feature to really make your phone yours even more. Google also announced three pieces of hardware. First, let's talk about the Google Pixel 7a. Now this phone uses the Google Tensor G2 chip with eight gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of onboard storage. The price that they announced this for was $499, competing at the mid-range level of smartphones. Now, this is actually a pretty good deal for what you're getting, but come on, Google, you gotta bump that up to 12 gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of onboard storage. If OnePlus can sell a phone like that, at that price range, then you could do it too, Google. Come on. Then they announced the Pixel tablet. Now this tablet is the first Android tablet from Google since 2015 when Google announced the Pixel C. This also is powered by the Google Tensor G2 chip. But the one thing that makes this tablet stand out is the speaker. Now the speaker not only charges the tablet, but it turns the tablet into a Google Nest home. One thing that Google did was optimize their apps to run better on tablets instead of making the apps into oversized phone apps. It also got Chromecast built in. This tablet will come in at $499 bundled with the speaker. Now you could get the speaker separately, but it's gonna cost you much more money. Then they finally announced the phone that people have been waiting for, the Pixel Fold. Now, I gotta talk about the price tag here for a minute. This thing comes in at $1,800. This is a huge gamble for Google, because if you remember, the first Samsung Fold came in at that price also. So Google has an uphill battle here with the foldable. That said, I think this device has potential. It uses the G2 chip, as does the rest of the Pixel hardware they announced. But what I like about this device is how flat it gets when it's folded. It looks really good and flat. There is a hinge sensor that detects when it's open. They also have continuity that allows you to continue to watch the video that you started on the smaller screen. One feature that is great with this is tabletop mode. That allows you to play a video, for example, and all of your controls will be on the bottom screen. This foldable allows you to open it while the camera app is open and allows you to use the back camera. Now this is actually really good because the back camera is usually the better camera on most smartphones. It's always usually better than the front facing camera. So that's been it for this video. I hope you found this video helpful. Comment down below what you liked about this video. Also subscribe, follow all the socials. All links are in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one. See ya. Bye-bye.